Hello, this is a video on limiting reactants. And first we're gonna try to get a handle on what limiting reactants means. And then we're gonna use stoichiometry to calculate the limiting reactant, find the excess reactant, how much excess is left over, and the amount of product formed. So let's first take a look at a metaphor. And recipes are always good because things happen in specific ratios. Here, if we just look at a simple sandwich, we have two pieces of bread and a slice of salami that's gonna make a salami sandwich. And if we think of this as a constant ratio, then no matter how many slices of bread or salamis we have, we will always adhere to that ratio. And with four pieces of bread and two salamis, we get two sandwiches. The bread and salami react in a two to one ratio. But the thing with limiting reactants is you're reacting huge amounts of particles, huge amounts of ingredients, and so that ratio they're supposed to combine in may not be present exactly. So let's take a look at what that means. So here, with 19 pieces of bread and two salamis, we're still stuck with that two to one ratio, and so we're still only going to get two sandwiches, and now we have some bread left over. So if we had more salami, could we make more sandwiches? Yes, of course we could. So the salami limits the amount of sandwiches that we can make, and we call the salami the limiting reactant, or in this case, the limiting ingredient. And of course, this can happen if we turn it around. Four bread and 10 salamis, we're still stuck with that two to one ratio. And so here we get two sandwiches. Now the salami is left over, and it is the amount of bread that limits the amount of sandwiches that, be, that can be produced. So here the bread is limiting. The two to one reaction ratio of bread to salami is maintained with excess bread or excess salami. Let's go to the lab and see what that looks like with a real chemical reaction. Let's take a look at an actual chemical reaction between glycerol and potassium permanganate and see what this looks like in the laboratory. Notice that the two reactants, potassium permanganate and glycerol, produce four products, two of which are gases and two are solids. We see the two solids, potassium carbonate and manganese 3 oxide. And what's most interesting is that we see there's plenty of potassium permanganate left over. So that tells us that glycerol must have been limiting. There's no more glycerol visible. The glycerol was all used up. And if we add more glycerol, then we would get more product. However, however, if we add more potassium permanganate, which is an excess, nothing would happen. There's no glycerol to react with it. So here, glycerol is limiting and potassium permanganate is in excess. Let's see what sort of calculations we can do to determine the specific amounts of the limiting reactant and the excess reactant, as well as the product. So in the final part of the video, we're going to look at limiting reactants at the molecular level and then limiting reactant calculations. Let's take a look at a simple example. Here we have two hydrogens reacting with one oxygen and the balanced equation, the hydrogens and oxygens react in a, in a two to one ratio. Let's see how that works. So the hydrogens and oxygens are in motion. They collide with each other. The oxygen breaks apart, the hydrogens break apart, and they all bond, and the result is two water molecules. Now let's look at a simulation illustrating a crucial point with limiting reactants. The reaction always occurs in the ratio given by the coefficients of the balanced equation, even when the starting material is not in that ratio. When we add more hydrogen, the reaction still occurs in the two to one ratio given by the coefficients. The added hydrogen collides but does not react, and so is left over at the end of the reaction. And so the reaction ratio is maintained as a two to one hydrogen to oxygen ratio given by the coefficients. It does not change just by adding more hydrogen. And of course, more hydrogen means that there is hydrogen left over in the reaction. So the hydrogen is in excess and the oxygen is limiting. 
the reactant that gets used up is the limiting reactant. The other reactant is in excess. Adding more limiting reactant to a reaction will result in more product. There is excess reactant present to react with it, but it will still only react in the ratio given by the coefficients. And that coefficient ratio will become extremely important when we look at the stoichiometry of calculating limiting reactants. So given a certain amount of starting material, how can we use that coefficient ratio to determine which reactant is limiting and which is in excess, as well as determining the amount of product formed? Let's start with something simple, a recipe. And recipes always have certain ratios of ingredients. That'll give us a straightforward access to the type of calculations used in limiting reactants. Let's say it takes three bananas and eight strawberries to make a smoothie how many smoothies can be made if you buy 180 bananas and 512 strawberries and also how much fruit would be left over. So we need a balanced equation to start with. So eight strawberries and three bananas gives us one smoothie. There's our coefficient ratio. So there are two ways to use the coefficient ratio to determine limiting versus excess. The first one is to use the coefficient ratio to calculate how much of each ingredient is needed given either starting material. We started with 180 bananas and 512 strawberries. So the first one, given 180 bananas, we multiply by the coefficient ratio. There's eight strawberries for every three bananas. And setting it up that way, the bananas cancel and we're left with strawberries. We can see that we will need 480 strawberries to react with all 180 bananas. However, we have more than that. We have 512 strawberries. And so what that tells us is that strawberries are in excess and 180 bananas is the limiting. All 180 bananas will be used up because we have enough strawberries to make smoothies with all those bananas. But what if you started with the amount of strawberries? 512 strawberries by the coefficient ratio. Now we use the reciprocal because we want to get rid of strawberries and have bananas left over. It says that we need 192 bananas to react with 512 strawberries. Well, we have less than 192 bananas. We only have 180 bananas. And so what that tells us is we don't have enough bananas to react with all of the strawberries available. And so bananas will limit the amount of product that can be formed. And so both of these calculations gave us the same conclusion that the limiting is the bananas and the excess is the strawberries. So you don't have to do both calculations. You only need to do one or the other. A second way of determining limiting versus excess is that the ingredient that is limiting will produce the least amount of product. So if we use the starting material to see which produces the least amount of product, that will tell us which is limiting. So now, given the starting material, in this calculation, 180 bananas, we see using the coefficient ratio, there's one smoothie for every three bananas, tells us that 60 smoothies can be produced from 180 bananas. Now we need to use the other amount of starting material, 512 strawberries times the coefficient ratio, one smoothie made for every eight strawberries. That will get us 64 smoothies. So now all you're doing is looking to see which one makes the least amount of product. Bananas makes the least amount of product. And so we get the same answer as before. The one that gives us the least amount of product is the limiting reactant. And so that's bananas. That makes the other reactant the one in excess. So we came to the same conclusion as the other method. And they both have advantages. The calculations in number one tell us which is limiting and how much of the excess is used up. And the calculations in number two tell us not only which is limiting, but also how much product will be made. So which method you use is simply determined by what information the question is asking. So we still need to calculate the last question, how much of the excess is left over. We know that we have 480 strawberries needed to react with the limiting amount of bananas, and that we have 512 strawberries. And so the difference is 
32 strawberries. So we'll have 32 strawberries left over. 32 strawberries will not get used up in making 60 smoothies. So let's do some practice problems with actual chemical reactions. So in the first problem, how many moles of ammonia NH3 can be made with 21 moles of hydrogen gas reacting with 8 moles of nitrogen gas? We are also going to find which reactant is limiting, which is in excess, and how much of the excess will be left over. So there are several questions being asked here, and let's just go ahead and label them. A, how many moles of ammonia will be made? B, which reactant is limiting? C, which is in excess? And D, how much of the excess will be left over? So to determine A, the amount of product formed, we actually have to start with B, determining which one is limiting. And because we want to find the amount of product formed, we are going to use the second method to determine the limiting reactant. And of course, we can't do anything in a limiting reactant problem if we don't have a balanced equation. And so we're going to add the coefficients, three hydrogens reacting with every one nitrogen that produces two ammonias. So in the first calculation, we take the amount of hydrogen given in the problem and multiply it by the coefficient ratio with hydrogen on the bottom and the product on top. So the coefficients for ammonia and hydrogen are 2 and 3, hydrogen on the bottom so that it cancels, and we are left with 14 moles of NH3 produced by the reaction of 21 moles of hydrogen. So in this method we simply are looking at which one will produce the least amount of product using the other amount, 8 moles of nitrogen, find out how much product will form using the coefficient ratio, and we see that 16 moles of NH3 will be produced from 8 moles of nitrogen. So here we see that 14 moles of NH3 is less product than the other one, and so therefore it is the 21 moles of hydrogen that is the limiting reactant. So we found the answer to B, the limiting is the hydrogen, and of course that automatically makes the nitrogen in excess. And since 14 moles of NH3 is the lesser of the calculated amounts produced, that's going to be the actual amount of product produced. The last question, D, how much will be left over? We can now calculate using the limiting amount because that's the one that's going to get used up. And so we can use that amount to calculate how much of the excess will be used in the reaction. So we multiply now by the coefficient of nitrogen, the other reactant, over hydrogen, and find that 7 moles of nitrogen are needed to react with 21 moles of hydrogen, but we actually have 8 moles of nitrogen. And so if we only use up 7 moles of that, we have 1 mole of nitrogen left over. And so that gives us the answer to D, the last question in the problem. However, in a laboratory, you're not dealing with moles directly because we cannot measure moles directly because we cannot count particles directly. We have to deal with moles through mass. And so normally in most textbook problems you'll be given mass amounts of reactants and you can convert mass to moles and so this becomes a straightforward mass-mass stoichiometry problem. And if you haven't gotten to stoichiometry yet or need to practice you may want to see this video on stoichiometry before coming back to see the rest of this video. So we are going to do two more practice problems using the starting material and mass instead of moles. Here we have a reaction between aluminum and hydrochloric acid. We are given 42.3 grams of aluminum and 156 grams of HCl, and we're being asked to find which is limiting, which is in excess, what mass in grams of the excess reactant is left over, and what mass of aluminum chloride will be produced. Of course, we have to balance the equation to get our coefficients. We get 2, 6, 2, and 3. So the first thing we'll do is the limiting calculation, and since the problem is asking for an amount of product, we will calculate the least amount of product formed to find the limiting reactant, and that will also tell us the amount of product formed. So we'll start with 42.3 grams of aluminum. We'll convert that to moles so we can then use the coefficient ratio to determine moles of aluminum chloride produced. 
grams of aluminum goes on bottom so it cancels moles on top to get the moles of aluminum so we can use the coefficient ratio. The coefficient ratio has aluminum on bottom and aluminum chloride on top. The equation gives a 2 to 2 ratio and gives us 1.57 moles of aluminum chloride. So what we want to do is compare that amount, 1.57 moles of aluminum chloride, with the amount of aluminum chloride produced from the reaction of the other reactant, 156 grams of hydrochloric acid. For every one mole, there is 36.5 grams. The coefficient ratio is different here. With HCl on the bottom, the ratio is 2 to 6. That calculation gives us 1.42 moles of aluminum chloride produced. That is less product than the other one, and so therefore HCl is the limiting reactant. We'll keep a tally of our answers over here. Limiting is HCl, and that means the other reactant, aluminum, is in excess. So let's determine the amount of excess, the amount of aluminum, that is left over. And what we're going to do is take the amount of limiting, since that amount is all used up in the reaction, and use that to determine how much aluminum will be needed to react with all 156 grams of HCl. We'll do a mass-mass stoichiometry calculation using the coefficients of aluminum and HCl, which gives us moles of aluminum used. But since the problem gives the amount of aluminum in grams, we want to go ahead and convert moles of aluminum to grams. And that tells us that 38.5 grams of aluminum is the amount needed to react with 156 grams of HCl. However, the amount we have is 42.3 grams of aluminum, and so the difference tells us the amount left over. And so now we have answered one more question in the problem the amount left over. And finally, to determine the amount of product produced, aluminum chloride, we again use the limiting amount. But with the limiting amount, we've already determined the amount of moles of aluminum chloride that will be produced, so all we need to do now is convert that to mass. So 1.42 moles of aluminum chloride, moles of aluminum chloride on the bottom, grams on top, molar mass 133.5 grams for every one mole, and we have 190 grams of aluminum chloride produced in the reaction from the limiting reactant, 156 grams of HCl. We have now answered all of the questions in problem number two. So let's do one more problem. Why don't you turn off the video and take several minutes to see if you can do the problem yourself. Don't forget to balance and then turn on the video and we'll go through it together. So let's balance first. 4, 7, 4, and 6 are the coefficients for the reaction. We have 60.1 grams of oxygen to begin with and 15.0 grams of ammonia on H3 to begin with. So which is limiting, which is an excess, how much is left over, and what mass of water will be produced. Same as before, the problem is asking how much of a product will be produced, so we're going to use the second method of determining the limiting reactant. So starting with 60.1 grams of oxygen, we'll determine how many moles of water is produced from that. First converting grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. There's one mole for every 32.0 grams. The mole ratio, oxygen on the bottom, the product, water on top. If we look at the equation, we see that the coefficients are 6 for water and 7 for oxygen. And that gives us 1.61 moles water produced from 60.1 grams of oxygen. Now let's see how much water is produced from 15 grams of ammonia. We get 1.32 moles of H2O from 15 grams of ammonia. So this is less product than the first calculation, and so that tells us that ammonia is the limiting reactant. So we'll keep our tally over here. 
And of course, if NH3 is limiting, that means the other reactant, oxygen, is in excess. Next calculation, let's determine how much is left over. So we're going to use the limiting amount, since that's the amount that gets used up in the reaction. 15 grams of ammonia. And now we need to determine how much oxygen will be used up. And that gives us a grand total of 49.4 grams of oxygen. That's the amount that is needed to react with all of, all of the limiting reactant, 15 grams of ammonia. But we actually have 60.1 grams of oxygen. And so the difference will be the amount left over. So 10.7 grams of oxygen is left over. So the last question is the amount of product, in this case water, that is going to be produced. Again, as before, we've already calculated the amount of moles of water that's going to be produced. So we'll simply use that as our starting amount. And simply convert it to grams of water. And so that tells us that 23.8 grams of water will be produced. And so we'll put it up here in our tally. And that answers all the questions in the problem.